I'm Dan Gray for Auto by Tail, and this sweet little ride is a 2016 Lincoln MKC. And yep, it's snowing again. So what do you say we hop in, take a ride, I'll tell you what I love about this critter, and share some of the things that I don't. The MKC is the smallest vehicle in the Lincoln lineup, and it's their first small crossover. If you're shopping the MKC against a competition, you're probably looking at, oh, the BMW X3, the Lexus NX, the Audi Q3 or Q5, the Acura RDX. Some folks might turn up their noses at the Lincoln MKC and say, oh, it's just a Ford Escape, a fancy Escape. Well, of course, it's based on the Ford Escape platform, and that's a pretty good place to start. Solid, stable, well-engineered. MSRP starts at just above 33,000, equipped with a two-liter EcoBoost engine and front-wheel drive. There are three trim levels, Premier, Select, and Reserve. You can get all-wheel drive with the two-liter, or you can step up to the 2.3-liter, as in our burgundy velvet metallic reserve test car. All MKCs are fitted with a push-button six-speed automatic transmission. The 2.3-liter EcoBoost 4 cranks out a very healthy 285 horsepower and 305 foot-pounds of torque when running on 93-octane gasoline. 0-60 to 60 time is in the mid-six-second range. Unlike many other turbocharged engines, EcoBoost engines do not require expensive premium fuel. 87-octane is recommended. The all-wheel drive-equipped MKC 2.3's fuel economy rating is 18 city, 26 highway, 21 combined. I was able to achieve those numbers in midwinter testing with a bit of restraint. Turbocharged engines are notoriously thirsty when driven with a heavy foot, but the 15.5 gallon fuel tank provides an acceptable amount of range if you can keep your foot out of it. While the MKC delivers a quiet, comfortable ride, handling isn't as crisp as the Audi Q3 that I tested last week, although it's significantly faster. Our tester was not equipped with the optional continuously controlled damping system. It's now 22 degrees. We've got an inch or so on the ground. It's collecting pretty quickly, and the MKC is handling it really well. Haven't had any situations where I felt it slipping more than it should. The intelligent all-wheel drive display inside the tachometer shows you where the power is going, whether it's to the front to the back. You can see where slip is happening. The 300 option group includes 18-inch alloys, but our tester had optional 20-inch alloys wrapped with Pirelli all-season tires. This steering wheel is lovely and it's heated. It's got just the right amount of padding underneath smooth leather, and I would say this leather is top shelf. The one thing that I'm not crazy about is that the controls are a little bit busy because you've got these dueling thumb pads. This one over here on the left side controls the display inside the tachometer. This one here on the right side controls the display that slides out from the speedometer. Underneath on the left side, you've got your adaptive cruise control, and on the right side, you have your Bluetooth and multimedia controls. Luxury to me is clicking that remote starter on a degree when it's in the single digits, knowing that the car is not just going to be warmed up, but that my seat heater is going to be on and my steering wheel heat is going to be on as well. So I never have to get into a cold car when it's frigid out. Our MKC was decked out with options, starting with a 300A package, which includes the gigantic Vista roof, heated and ventilated front bucket seats, blind spot mirrors, and cross traffic alert. The interior has an understated elegance. With perforated leather upholstery and 10-way power adjustment, the front buckets are quite good. But one shortcoming? The power lumbar support is only two-way. Our MKC also had the technology package with adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning with brake support, active lane keep, forward sensing, and active park assist. The climate package includes a heated steering wheel, automatic high beams, heated rear seats, and rain sensing wipers with heated wiper park. The MKC is equipped with a Sync 3 infotainment system which provides support for Siri Eyes Free, Pandora, and Spotify, among other apps. While Sync 3 is a big improvement over Sync 2, it's not quite as slick as Apple CarPlay. Our tester had the optional 700 watt THX2 audio system with 14 speakers. And I'll give that one a big thumbs up. There are two USB ports in a compartment at the front of the console, along with a 12 volt outlet. A second 12 volt outlet is inside the center console, and a third is in the cargo area. 
The second row seats provide 38.7 inches of headroom, 36.8 inches of legroom, and 55.3 inches of shoulder room. Not bad getting in. Mm, I've got about three fingers of headroom. Yeah, just about three fingers of headroom to the side. You've got this enormous panoramic moonroof, which gives more room for the person that might sit in the middle. But if you're on the side, you've got about three fingers. The seating position is upright, and there's not a whole lot of legroom. I've got this seat pretty far back to where I'm comfortable driving. And at 510, I'm a little tight. The great thing is that we've got some recline in the back seat here so we can lean back. Once that happens, it gets a lot better. Now I move up to four fingers of headroom, much more comfortable with a lean back style. Got the squishy center armrest with two cup holders here. We've got bottle holders in the doors. And ooh, look at this, heated seats, which is awesome because it's 20 degrees today and I am freezing. And we've got, uh, let's see, HVAC vents. And in here, a 12 volt and house cart. The hands-free lift gate eases cargo loading. There's 25.2 cubic feet of cargo area behind the second row seat and 53.1 cubic feet with the 60-40 seat folded down. The seat releases are accessed from the side doors. The optional cargo area protector is a really nice touch. Maybe I'm channeling my inner Matthew McConaughey, but the MKC, it defines American luxury with an undeniable street presence. It excels on style and ride, in addition to offering a comprehensive suite of safety and infotainment technology. Although the transmission could deliver shifts more briskly, the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine provides ample acceleration. And while the MKC's handling isn't as tight as the European competition, this is, after all, a Lincoln, not a BMW, which is just fine in my book. 